cast the models in dental stone in the usual manner using the preliminary impressions. After the dental stone has set, carefully remove the impression from the model. Make sure that all the information from the preliminary impression has been accurately reproduced on the model. Remove any flaws from the impression such as air bubbles, pressure spots, extraction wounds, flabby ridges, etc. already at this stage. Use a split cast plate. Detach it now. Trim the models and smoothen the sharp edges. Cut back the preliminary impression to ensure stable three-point support of the models. Mark the position of the centric tray on the model to support the reproduction of the close-fitting three-point support. The following anatomical reference points are the basis for further working steps. Papilla incisiva and the palatine rafe, which forms the anatomical midline. Extend the palatine rafe up to the dorsal area and transfer it to the model edge. Mark the dorsal end of the retromolar pad. For the alignment of the occlusal plane, bisect the two retromolar pads. Often, the whole pad cannot be identified clearly. However, experience has shown that the occlusal plane is situated approximately 5 mm below the dorsal end. Mark the extended anatomical midline in the upper jaw on the model edge and transfer it to the lower jaw. Mark the lowest point in the vestibule and trim the model edge up until this point. The relation of the jaw models obtained with the centric tray corresponds roughly with the subsequent vertical dimensions within which the occlusion is built up or reconstructed. With the help of the horizontal guide, align the mandibular model in the articulator according to average values. This ensures that the models are positioned within the Bonville triangle according to average values. Before mounting, set the symphysis fork of the horizontal guide to half the intervestibular distance. This means half the distance between the mucolabial folds of the mandible and the maxilla. The fork sits on the lowest point of the mucolabial fold, oriented according to the midline. Align the side wings towards the dorsal region to half of the retromolar pad. Adjust the wings of the horizontal guide according to the length of the mandible in a sagittal direction. Symmetrically align the line system with the alveolar ridge. Once you have reached the correct position, secure the horizontal guide on the model using sticky wax. Now the model can be mounted in the articulator. Screw the base plate for the lower jaw in place. Mount the instrument carrier in the upper frame base and fasten it with screws. Align the incisal guide rod to the red mark and secure it. It is now in the initial position. Insert the horizontal guide completely into the instrument carrier and secure it. Articulate the models in the usual way, with or without a split cast system. Once the plaster has set, you can carefully detach the horizontal guide from the mandibular model and remove the instrument carrier. Also remove any interfering residues of sticky wax without damaging the model. Reposition the centric tray and check the fit together with the maxillary model. The markings simplify the aligning of the parts correctly. Once the maxillary model has been secured with sticky wax or silicone, it can be articulated. If the models are extremely moist, use a fast setting silicone. The models are already aligned as required, taking the temporary vertical dimension, the retromolar pad, as well as the anatomical midline into consideration. Carefully block out the undercuts with wax. The maxillary model can be blocked out with wax in the area of the palatine rugae so that the impression is as detailed as possible. For the custom tray, create an acrylic base within the maximum tray extension line. 
It is important to keep the movable mucous membrane unobstructed for the myodynamic expansion. To ensure the retention of the bite rim, create a retentive pattern into the uncured acrylic on the occlusal surface of the upper base. In the lower jaw, add a retentive railing to the base as space is limited. Light curing is carried out according to the manufacturer's instructions. Roughen the surface and remove interfering surplus. Intraoral registration is particularly suitable for determining the maxillomandibular relationship in an edentulous patient. Protect the retention elements of Nathometer M with wax. Use tray material to build up the lower rim. Attach the Nathometer M bite support to the lower rim. Then align the prepared lower rim with the occlusal plane using uncured tray material. Take the anterior midline and the defined retromolar pads into consideration. Polymerize according to the manufacturer's instructions. For the maxilla, the Nothometer M is mounted in such a way that the white bite plates close parallel to the mandibular arch. Finish the custom trays with the integrated intraoral registration. Check the tray extension and adjust if necessary. Smooth out sharp edges. Keep the moveal parts of the mucous membrane unobstructed. Observe the myodynamic expansion. Remove the inhibition layer. Finally, adjust the screw to the height of two bite plates. This corresponds to two times two millimeters. Secure the adjusted screw with a drop of wax. Now, the custom trays with integrated bite registrations and the prepared registration set are ready for use in the patient. The benefits of Nathometer M are obvious. The bite is registered in a relaxed position. Gothic arch tracing is carried out in an easy and time-saving way. You benefit from increased safety when the bite is taken because the registration is stable and secure. You can adjust the intervestibular opening easily and continuously. You can easily verify the reference planes and work wax-free.